Good evening and welcome. It's my great uh, honor and privilege to introduce our two honored guests this evening. And uh, I will be brief so we can get on with it. I'd like to introduce Kuwitsu Suzuki Roshi, who is the Dharma heir of his late father, Shogaku Shinru Suzuki Roshi. He earned a bachelor's degree from Kamazawa <coughs> University, and he became abbot of Rinzawan Temple in Japan. And I believe it's for seven years, had held positions of great responsibility at a heiji. Among those to whom he has, uh, it, that, you know, uh, he has uh, given transmission, among others, but are Jackie Sho Kwam and Robbie Pellet, who is here this evening. To translate this evening is Sokan Daigako Rumi, and we're very honored to have him here. He is the head of Soto Zen in North America, an abbot of the Soto Zen International Center. He was ordained in 1978. He has traveled the world <coughs> industrially widely uh, and is a vital bridge uh, between Zen in the West and its deep roots in Japan. Welcome is my honor. Thank you. Tomorrow we have the Shuso Hosenshiki ceremony, the Dharma inquiry ceremony. And the origins of that ceremony, at which time tomorrow the Shuso takes the place of the head priest, the abbot of this temple, to expound the Dharma. The origins of the ceremony uh, go back to the time of the Buddha. The Buddha had a, a disciple named Makakasho, Mahakashapa. And uh, Makakasho uh, lived a very uh, simple life, a very strict, or maybe we should say austere life. And uh, when people saw his, his robes, which were so poor, sometimes they uh, looked down on him because he looked so, uh, perhaps we could say he looked miserable somehow because he looked so poor. Uh, but uh, the Buddha saw this and uh, since the Buddha uh, knew the value of Makakasho, he invited uh, Makakusho to share his seat. So he moved over. The Buddha moved over so that Makakusho could sit next to him and, and uh, expound the Dharma. Uh, uh, tomorrow, Nyoze Osho will be the Shuso, uh, who is uh, the main part of the ceremony. Uh, unfortunately, 
uh, his master, uh, Jaksho Roshi, uh, very uh, suddenly was uh, hospitalized. Uh, he should be here tonight. He should be the main uh, officiant of the ceremony tomorrow, but that will not be possible. And for that reason, uh, Hoitsu Roshi will be uh, serving as the officiant. Uh, in the same way that uh, Shakyamuni Buddha had faith and confidence in his disciple, uh, Makagasha, uh, such that he uh, gave half of his seat to his disciple, uh, Jaksho Roshi also has that confidence in Yose that he is able to expound the Dharma as the Shusa. Uh, I think he will have the, um, the function of leading this Sangha from now on. So I ask all of the members here to help him uh, such that together you can uh, raise the the practice. You can raise the, the Buddha Dharma here at this temple. Uh, the main theme of the ceremony tomorrow is a, a mondo, a dialogue that uh, involves Bodhidharma. And uh, I'd like to think through, or shall we say, think, think about that story, that mondo, uh, together with you. Uh, this case uh, involves uh, Bodhidharma, uh, who lived about 1,500 years ago. He was an Indian monk who uh, traveled from India to China. And uh, the emperor at that time, Emperor Wutei, uh, knew that uh, Bodhidharma was coming to China. And he was uh, looking forward to meeting uh, Bodhidharma. And uh, that this story uh, that we're going to talk about is uh, about their uh, encounter. Uh, the first question that Emperor Ute uh, asked Bodhidharma was, uh, I have been a great patron of Buddhism. Uh, I've had many uh, temples built, uh, or they had many supported the ordinations of many uh, monks, as well as the translations of many sutras. How much merit have I uh, accumulated uh, as a result of that? And Bodhidharma said, uh, no merit. <laughs> Emperor Ute uh, had studied uh, Buddhism uh, thoroughly. Uh, he knew that uh, if there's a good cause, there will be a good result. 
if there's a bad cause, there will be a bad result. Uh, so he expected that uh, if he had done many good things, that the result would be uh, much merit. Uh, and yet Bodhidharma, uh, in response to his question, said no merit. Uh, for that reason, the emperor was, uh, well, uh, confused. He, he didn't understand why. So the next question that um, the emperor asked, uh, of course, he had studied Buddhism, and he was familiar with a certain phrase, Shotai Daichi. Uh, this is uh, translated, what is the, the highest truth of the holy teachings uh, of Buddhism? What is the uh, highest teaching of Buddhism? Uh, Bodhidharma replied, Kakunen Musho, that's the, the original Chinese, or the Japanese pronunciation, often translated as emptiness, nothing holy. So there's nothing, nothing holy uh, means nothing that's particularly important or valuable. Uh, from the viewpoint of the Buddha, uh, everything uh, is the Buddha. Since everything and all things are the Buddha, it is impossible to say that one thing is more important, uh, one thing is more or is higher or is more valuable than, than anything else. <clears throat> so the, the realm of the Buddha uh, is one in which uh, all things, uh, since all things are the Buddha, uh, it is impossible to say uh, this is more important or this is more valuable or this is higher in value and so on. Uh, it's like the weather here uh, today in Sonoma. Perfectly clear. It's hard. You couldn't really say. Well, uh, uh, is it? Could it be better weather, or uh, is this? Uh, where did that good weather come from? Uh, is is this part better than the other? Uh, it's all good weather. It's all clear. Uh, in the same way, this is the way it is in the world of the Buddha. That all things uh, are the Buddha. Emptiness, no holiness, nothing holy, nothing more valuable than anything else. Uh, this is because that uh, preciousness, uh, if we talk about something having value, uh, that's within something unlimited. And because it has no limit or no end, uh, another way of saying that would be that there is nothing holy. At that point, the emperor uh, asked another question. Uh, who, who is standing in front of me? And, and the reason he asked that is that uh, as the emperor, uh, of course, all the people in China thought that he was uh, important, uh, that there was a value in, in, in his being the emperor. And, and here somebody was saying, uh, there is nothing holy or nothing important, you see. And uh, Bodhidharma said, uh, that can't be known. Often translated as, uh, don't know. Uh, but this is something that cannot be known, he meant to say, uh, by thinking. In the encounter between Bodhidharma and the Emperor of China, they simply couldn't see eye to eye. Uh, in each of the questions and answers, uh, the Emperor couldn't understand what Bodhidharma was trying to say. Uh, for that reason, Bodhidharma decided to leave the capital. He headed north to the mountains, and there he 
set in Zazen. And it's because he, he brought Zazen from India to China that uh, gradually that uh, practice spread throughout China, Korea, Japan, and now it has come here to the West, including this temple, Genjoji. The uh, seeds have been planted, the, the, the roots are, are growing out, and uh, uh, we can see that uh, this practice is really growing here as well. Before Bodhidharma arrived in China, a Buddhism had been uh, passed on, had been, uh, Buddhist teaching had been uh, transmitted to China through the sutras and various other forms. However, it was really a Bodhidharma uh, who brought, uh, we could call the mind seal. Something uh, that uh, uh, went beyond uh, the teachings. Um, this uh, mind seal uh, is something that has to be practiced. It's not enough uh, simply to know about it. Uh, it's something that uh, through practice uh, appears, the body of the Buddha, the mind of the Buddha. Uh, this appears uh, through practice. And uh, it was through the practice of Bodhidharma that it settled in China, and now uh, it has been passed down to the present day. And it's up to us, uh, as part of our uh, way of practice, to continue this practice. Uh, by continuing this practice, my hope is that this mind, this pure mind, will spread throughout the world. Uh, all things throughout heaven and earth are the Buddha mind. They express the Buddha mind. Uh, mountains, trees, rivers, uh, clouds, rocks, all things we see around here in nature, uh, they express the Buddha mind through their being. Mm. Uh, for us uh, as well, in our practice, our everyday practice, uh, we express the Buddha mind. And uh, to do this uh, peacefully, uh, calmly, this is the way we carry forth the Buddha's teaching by expressing it through our practice. That's the end.
Good evening and welcome. It's my great uh, honor and privilege to introduce our two honored guests this evening. And uh, I will be brief so we can get on with it. I'd like to introduce Kuitsu Suzuki Roshi, who is the Dharma heir of his late father, Shogaku Shinru Suzuki Roshi. 